Well, um, thank you guys all for coming. So I'm interested in low dimensional topology, Haggard floor theory, contact geometry, and um, the one I want to talk a little bit about today is, is the last one. So I'll start with a few definitions. Um, in the interest of time, these are not going to be as general as they possibly could be. So uh, for example, I'm only going to be talking about contact geometry for three manifolds. So if you have a one form on an orientable three manifold, then you say this is a contact form. Uh, it's a contact form if it satisfies the relationship alpha wedge d alpha is greater than zero. So every um, orientable three manifold admits such a contact form, and something as simple as, as choosing one, in fact, gives you a really rich um, amount of structure to study. So one of the things you get right away is that you get a two plane field on the manifold. And this just comes from taking the kernel of this one form at every point. And this two plane field is actually called a contact structure. So often when people are talking about a contact manifold, rather than specifying the form, what you're really interested in is just this pair where you fix your three manifold and then you take this two plane field. So you can have more than one form that gives you the same, the same kernel, not surprisingly. So the, one of the things that's nice about contact geometry is it has a lot of connections to other um, fields. Uh, it's sort of, you can think of it as an odd dimensional cousin to symplectic geometry, which is an even dimensional theory. Um, there's lots of connections to symplectic geometry. As an example of one, um, if you have a contact manifold, where here, let me fix for a moment um, the form. If this is contact, then you immediately get a symplectic manifold by taking the four manifold, R cross M3, with the two form <coughs> D e to the T alpha. Where here, the T is just giving you the R parameter. So one of the upshots of these connections with symplectic geometry is it gives you sort of a whole set of techniques um, to study contact manifolds coming from the symplectic side of things. So an example of this, um, not necessarily with this con construction, but just sort of in general, the fact that you have this close tie to symplectic geometry, is that floor theory is a really valuable set of tools for studying contact geometry. And so floor theory um, gives you a whole collection of constructions which um, whose essential ingredient is counting pseudo-holomorphic curves in um, symplectic manifolds with some compatible, almost complex structure. So another a sort of um, feature and then corresponding technique that comes up is that, again, when you choose this contact form alpha, then you immediately get a vector field on the manifold. Um, it's called the Rabe vector field. And it's just defined by being the vector field that satisfies the equations alpha x equals 1 and d alpha evaluated on x and anything else is 0. But um, as an upshot of having this vector field appear so naturally, then you also see a lot of um, features of dynamics showing up in, um, in the study of, of contact manifolds. So just from these sort of two things I've listed here, you can see there's a lot of analytical flavor. But um, what I'd like to mention is a theorem, beautiful theorem of Giroux that says that this isn't actually the only way to look at these objects. So this is um, Giroux, also Thurston, and Winkelkamper. And this is called the open book theorem. And the idea is that if you have a contact manifold, then um, which we think of as just as a pair, this manifold and this two-plane field, then you could equivalently study a different kind of pair. And this other kind of pair, um, SH, where here S is a surface with boundary, and H is a homeomorphism of the surface, um, which restricts on the boundary of the surface to the identity. And these two, this, this together is called an open book. So, Open books had been studied from a topological point for some time, and it's not so strange to think that you can recover a topological three manifold from an open book. The construction in this case is a pretty natural thing to do. You have your surface with boundary, so say you have a punctured torus, and you cross the surface with the interval. And then use this homeomorphism H to glue up to get the mapping torus um, for this construction. So this is just taking the identification. Points x0 are identified 
with h of x1. This gives you a manifold with toroidal boundary components. And then you make the further identification that xt is identified with xt prime for all x in the boundary of the surface. So this gives you a closed three manifold. But um, what's really special about Giroux's theorem is he says that not only you recover this topological object, but you also get information about this contact form, or uh, contact structure, I should say. And this has turned out to be really fruitful because in addition to having the perspective of the things sort of on this side of the arrow to work with, it also gives tools from surface topology as another way to study contact um, objects. So um, one of the ways this has shown up is with um, studying things, um, open books, in terms of mapping class groups. So just as an example of, of the kind of result that this has given, one of the natural questions you can ask about a contact manifold is, what sort of symplectic manifold does it bound? And there are circumstances where this can now be answered in terms of features of this gluing homeomorphism H. So you can say, if H can be written as a certain kind of word um, in a certain set of generators for the mapping class group, then the corresponding contact manifold is the boundary of a certain kind of symplectic manifold. What is the um, so I, didn't, I haven't told you what it is here. So the basic idea is that when you do this identification, um, you end up getting something so that the, these two plane fields are almost tangent to each of the surfaces cross, um, cross a point. And, um, and we have some, a few more requirements also in how this, um, this vector field interacts. So I, I, didn't, I didn't spell that out at, at all. It's somehow surprising maybe that you can recover, you can recover this from the open book decomposition. Uh, so, so I'm interested in. in oh. I'm sorry. The three, the three manifolds are exactly the same, and the point is that actually choosing to represent your three manifold this way gives you enough information for this. And um, for the sake of honesty, I should also note that there's this one-to-one -one correspondence, but of course there's there's some natural identifications on each side. So we allow um, there's there's uh, something called positive stabilization you can do to an open book. And we consider contact manifolds up to some other natural notion of equivalence. Um, so as I said, I'm, I'm interested in questions sort of on both sides of this arrow. But, um, and what I'd like to do is, is give you an example of something, some recent work I've done um, jointly with uh, Josh Stabloff that gives an example of um, sort of how, how our work fits into seeing things from one side or from the other um, to try to get an interesting perspective on a question in contact geometry. And the question I want to answer is a question about um, the knot theory that's associated to contact manifolds. So let me provide one more definition. So if you have a submanifold in a contact manifold, we say that it's Legendrian if the tangent space to the submanifold is contained in this two plane field. So one of the consequences of this condition, alpha wedge d alpha greater than zero, is that the two-plane field is completely non-integrable. So the planes sort of twist as you move through along a path through the manifold, um, and they're not the tangent planes to any surface. Nevertheless, you can still ask this question, what kind of substructures um, are they tangent to? And in the case of a contact three manifold, you can find embedded one manifolds, which everywhere satisfy this tangency condition. So in particular, I'm interested in the case of Legendrian knots. Um, as is often the case in sort of questions of knot theory, we don't treat the Legendrian knots as rigid objects, but we allow some sort of deformation. And in this case, um, we say the two embeddings of um, the circle are equivalent as Legendrian knots if you can smoothly deform one to the other uh, through a path of knots that preserves this condition. So one of the tools that's been really effective at studying Legendrian knots, and again, has this beautiful connections to, to symplectic geometry, is the Legendrian contact homology developed by Hofer and Eli Oshberg. And in this setting, you get a knot invariant which takes the form of a differential algebra. And the, the algebra itself is generated by certain integral curves of this vector field here. So algebra A is generated by integral curves of this ray vector field. And then you can define a map from A to A, which counts holomorphic disks 
in this associated symplectic manifold M cross R3, again with some compatible, almost complex structure. And when certain technical conditions are satisfied, one of the things that's really nice about this is that you get d squared equals zero, so it makes sense to talk about the homology of this algebra. And in fact, the homology gives you an invariant of the Legendrian knot type up to this kind of allowable deformation. So what Josh and I did um, is, is we defined a knot invariant, so invariant for Legendrian knots, which you can think of sort of as a combinatorial model for the object over here on the left. So we looked at Legendrian knots in Seifert fiber spaces. And Seifert fiber spaces are an important class of three manifolds. They've been studied for a long time. Um, they're, it's a three manifold together with a decomposition as a disjoint union of S1s. And perhaps in this setting, the most useful thing to know about them is that you can think of the three manifold as an S1 bond bundle over a two-dimensional orbifold. Um, this is a broad class of manifolds, represents um, six of the eight different Thurston model geometries for a three manifold. And um, they're, they're well classified. So there's a collection of numerical invariants. If you know the invariants, you know everything about your Seifert fiber space. And you can sort of uh, compare two Seifert fiber spaces and decide if they're the same or different. So the feature we use is the fact that in a certain, in a certain setting, so we have our Legendrian knots in Seifert fiber spaces. And what we require is that something called the rational Euler number of the manifold is negative. And when, without saying what this is, um, the nice feature of when this is satisfied is it also gives us sort of a dictionary between things that are very natural in the contact side over here and things that arise from sort of classical study of Seifert fiber spaces. So one of the features that we have is that on this side, um, in Legendrian contact homology, you're interested in this algebra generated by the integral curves of x. And what we consider is a contact form alpha such that the um, integral curves of x are exactly these Seifert fibers. So as soon as we identify the manifold topologically, we're also seeing it as the result of this particular choice of contact form. And um, I'm sorry? As long as this condition is satisfied, there's always an alpha. Um, so, so beyond just having the fact that these integral curves are fibers, this gives us a little bit more to say. Um, over here, we can um, talk about, uh, so, so, we, so this allows us to, sorry, come up with the generators, and we want to have some way to describe um, what this, what kind of, how we could get a boundary map on an, on an algebra of this sort. And what we consider is when we have a Legendrian knot in this three manifold, we can consider its projection to this two-dimensional orbifold, and um, we define an invariant that's computed combinatorially from that projection to the orbifold. So this invariant is successful in some sense in that we can distinguish knots that were previously not able to be distinguished. But um, it's also sort of an interesting feature because just at a topological level, knots in circle bundles haven't been studied particularly extensively. So there's some interesting topological questions that come up. And we were able to answer a question of Turayev about um, extending uh, the knot theory from knots in smooth S1 bundles to these, the knot theory in these orbifold S1 bundles. But I think it's also interesting to think about how you can pull things sort of across the arrow going the other way. We have this um, differential algebra which gives us an invariant of a knot, and we suspect that what it actually does is, is giving us some sort of um, subalgebra of the actual Legendrian contact homology, but that's not something we see explicitly in our construction. And so it also offers some other questions for things to look at. Um, the algebra we get is, is maybe smaller than the complete contact homology algebra. So is there a way to identify it as something that makes sense on this analytical side? And sort of back and forth, is there a way to see these two perspectives um, sort of coming together? So there's a variety of, of um, different things I'm interested in. hope I get a chance to talk to a lot of you um, this year. But I think that's where I'll stop for now. <laughs>